The last update on this project was about a month ago, at which point I had swapped the motor on my direct drive turntable. I was using a 28 BYJ stepper, which had terrible backlash and a lack of usable rotation positions. I switched this up to the smaller FIT0503 geared stepper. This has a metal reduction gearbox with a 1 to 100 ratio. Because it was smaller than the motor it was replacing, I could just print some shims to fit it into the existing mechanism. When it was installed, there was noticeably less backlash for the table and many more usable steps per revolution. But I noticed immediately that using the published number of steps per revolution, the turntable wasn't turning a full revolution. So it was time to determine the number of steps empirically. The experiment setup is to capture an image and then perform a full rotation of the table and to repeat this a number of times. When viewed as a time-lapse video, the sequence of images should show a stationary image, but under or over rotation of the table will be represented as precession or recession in the frames. The datasheet's step angle is 18 degrees, so that's 20 steps per revolution of the motor shaft. With a 1 to 100 gearbox that becomes 2000 steps per revolution. This sequence of images, which is looping, shows that for 1984 steps there's more than one revolution of the table. And for this sequence we reduced the number of steps between images from 1984 to 1976 and now the table is under rotating, so the sweet spot is between 1976 and 1984. 1,983 steps is over-rotating again, reducing the window from 1976 to 1983. 1982 continues to over-rotate, but by noticeably less. And for 1,980 we are seeing rotation in the other direction, so we're now under-rotating for each revolution of the table. With 1980 under-rotating and 82 over-rotating, this suggests the sweet spot must be 1981 steps per revolution. Finding the exact number of steps should have solved my problem, but now for 1981 steps we see a mixture of slight over and slight under rotation. Not being able to accurately position the table is right back where we started, and whilst it has improved with the new motor, the number of steps per revolution, 1981, is almost prime and therefore very difficult to divide down into even steps. I took a bit of a break and decided that what I wanted to do was to redesign the turntable to be more fit for purpose. In the new design I'm using the same motor but rather than directly driving the table I'm using a special worm gear. The table has a hundred teeth around the outside which corresponds to a hundred different orientations. The white goop you can see is silicon grease, which just helps reduce the friction. I've kind of got it everywhere at the minute. If we freeze the worm gear, on this half of the gear you can see that the teeth are actually parallel, and that serves to lock the current tooth in its position. And if we freeze the gear 180 degrees later, you can see this half progresses exactly one tooth. For every full revolution of the worm, the table progresses one tooth, but for half of that revolution, it's locked in a known position, which is useful. The new table is very slow, but it gives exactly 100 fixed rotation positions. Moving from one rotation position to the next requires 1981 steps of the motor, and the position is then locked for about 500 of those steps so the stepper and gearbox can easily afford to be off by plus or minus 20 steps, as long as the error is cyclic, not cumulative. Now with 200 steps per tooth and 100 teeth per revolution, it takes almost three hours to do 10 full revolutions of the tape. This sequence of image shows the stability of the period of the new design. And yes, I did just chuck whatever junk I had the hand on at the start of the experiment. Shown side by side, we can see the improvement in the stability of the new design compared to the old. Thank you for watching and stay safe.